Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence tonight, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we've come to magnify your name and lift your name on high. We just say right now, when your spirit falls, we will not resist it, but we will yield we will yield to the fire. We will yield to the fire. We will not resist your presence. Oh Lord, it is our desire to remain in you and that you would remain in us. Oh Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the honor and the privilege. What an honor and a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. 
We give you all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise that is due your name. Oh Lord, we just ask that you would take the night, even right now, that you would take control, Lord. Oh Jesus, that you would burn us up, God. That we would be dead, Lord. That we would start this meeting out tonight as dead wood. That you would set a blaze. Oh Jesus, it is our desire that you would dwell among us. That you would make your dwelling place here on earth. Oh Lord, whatever you ask of us, we will give it, Lord. We ask for the grace to yield to you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.
This afternoon I was waiting on the Lord and I don't know if it's going to happen this way or not but I saw myself just walking the aisles tonight 
asking people if they were hungry for the Lord. And the Lord was touching the hungry. I'm speaking to our staff, I'm speaking to our interns, I'm speaking to the congregation, the visitors. Are, are you hungry tonight? Are you hungry tonight? Then why don't you in your own way just ask the Lord to touch you? I am a walking, living testimony of somebody who got touched by the Lord as a little boy and he changed everything. Oh, Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right, Candace. I just heard Candace say, touch me tonight, Lord, touch me tonight. You gotta ask him, I can't ask him for you, not that, not that. Touch us, Lord. Touch me, touch me in my heart, change my life. Don't leave us this way. We must know you, we want to know you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Touch us, touch us, touch us. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. I'm gonna ask you just not across the aisles to join hands and I want you to begin praying for one another. And I want you to pray big, explosive, faith-filled prayers. Do it right now. Out loud. It's not a time to wait. It's not a time to soak. It's a time to declare the word of the Lord. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Pray, Father, let the, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon your people. Let the spirit of prayer consume them. Don't just pray, bless them. Pray God's perfect will for their lives. Pray big things. Thank you, Lord. Keep praying. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Pray that the Lord would encounter them tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Keep praying. Thank you, Jesus. Keep praying. Keep praying. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Sharon, come up here, Sharon. Sharon. Keep praying, church. You pray. Come on. Father God, we thank you, Father God. We thank you for your beautiful and sweet presence, Father God. We are before you, Lord Jesus, asking you to touch us, Father God. We give you our lives and we live surrendered lives before you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you encounter each and every one of us, Father yes, God. Lord. That you just fan, that you just fan us, Father God. That you just fan us in that flame that is burning in us, Father God, just arises, Father God. That you anoint us with your oil, Father God. And that you burn us, that you burn us, Father God. That we will burn for nothing 
more than you, Father God, that we will long for nothing more than your presence, Lord Jesus. Captivate us with your love, Father God. Captivate us with your presence and change us forever. Encounter us, Lord. Encounter us, Father God. Heal our minds, Father Keep God. Praying. Keep Heal praying. our hearts, Keep Lord praying. Jesus. Heal our bodies, Lord Jesus. Set us free. Set us free, Father God. To live a life filled with your glory, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. And we long for you, Father God. Let our hearts burn. Let our hearts burn for you day and night, Father God. Give us a fresh encounter, Lord. Pour your new wine over us today. Fill us up, Father God. Fill us up until we overflow, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, mark us. Mark us. Mark our homes. Mark our families, Lord. Mark this nation, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Don't thank me. Don't thank me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Praise you, Lord. Lord, you've heard every word. We trust you. We, we know you hear us. You promise to. We come in Jesus' name, trusting you. We know you answer prayer. Glorify our Father in heaven through these answered prayers. That's what your word says. And so, Lord, we, we lift our hands and we say, what an honor to be in your presence tonight. Can we just thank him? <laughs> like from your heart, in a real way, thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you. Can we just give him praise and seal every prayer we just take? already is. Oh, one more, one more. Come on. Bless his name. Bless his your name. Bless his your name.
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. And God's people said, Amen. 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 You've come forward. You can go back to your seats. Can we thank our worship team, please? If I could just have the pulpit. Thank you, Daniel. Wow. What do you say? Let's get to our seats in the Lord's presence. Let's be sensitive tonight. Thank you, Lord. you to come stand over here, but just wait there. Lily, as I was standing there, I heard the Lord say, it's Lily's turn tonight. I heard that in my heart. Come sit here, Lily. Where's Judy? songs of prayer, see? Judy. singing Judy shining in the light of your glory Feel pour out your power and love as we sing 
bless her. Never the same. Never, ever, ever the same. It's your turn, Lily. It's your turn, man. It's your turn. Father, thank you for what you're doing. I'm very proud of Raul. He's he served here so faithfully for two years. And he's gone back to Seattle. and We've had the privilege of serving what the Lord has given, given him there. And uh, people are coming from all over just to be in the presence of God. And I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. And... Uh, He's a humble heart. He, when Jesse walked through her, her skin cancer, he flew here just to be in the city. He said, I know you're probably too busy to even see us, but I just need you to know I'm in the city. So it's no shock to me that the Lord's using him and how he's using Lily and, and the whole team, everyone. Christy said something you're going to hear from her in just a second, but She said the Lord is basically highlighting his humility with the Lord's humble heart. What a treasure. May it be, Lord. Increase your humility in this. And tonight we're going to bring our offerings, our best to the Lord. And I couldn't think of anyone better tonight to receive the Lord's offering than Raul. And then Pastor Benny will be here in just a few minutes. And He'll minister to us. That's why I have a gator hat on. I'm taking the night off if this, if this is a night off. And I'm praying the Lord would touch our team as well. <laughs> Tonight's going to be a very beautiful, sacred night. So can we honor Raul and receive him? such a blessing to be here, Michael. I, I love you guys so much. Jesus image. I, 
what the Lord's doing in Seattle is, it's profound, at least to me. And none of it would have been, none of it would have happened if it wasn't for my time here and, and you guys. It's just such a privilege and honor. Anytime I know that I, anytime I want to be in the presence of the Lord, I know for certain I can come here and he's here every Sunday. And it's just, it just happens every time. It's so thankful. Um, I just, I want to quickly share a, a, a small principle in the kingdom. And I think it applies beyond just, I know it applies beyond just giving. Um, and I think it can maybe even put some word towards what the Lord's doing in the room and at JI, even um, what happened at Asbury. But in Exodus 33, Moses is having a conversation with the Lord. And the Lord says, I'll send an angel before you to the promised land and I'll bless you go on without me. And Moses says, Lord, I will not go without you. He says, how will the people, the nations know that you are pleased with us if you don't come with us? See, the pleasure of the Lord and the presence of the Lord are hand in hand. That's why when Jesus was baptized, God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And you saw the, the spirit descend on him as a dove and remain. In Ephesians 5, it says, there's two verses. It's verse 10 and verse 17. One says, it says, do not be foolish, but know the will of the Lord. But the other one says, find out what pleases the Lord. You can accomplish the will of the Lord in a manner that's not pleasing to the Lord. There's four accounts in the Gospels of Jesus healing the blind. And with one, he speaks and he gets healed. The other, he uh, lays his hand on his eyes and he gets healed. The other, he spits in the dirt, makes mud, puts it on his eyes, tells him to go wash it off and he gets healed. Uh, and then the fourth one, he spits in his eyes and he gets healed. It would be foolish to say the will of God is not to heal the blind. But Jesus walked in a sensitivity to the presence of the Father where in every situation, in every circumstance, he knew the way to accomplish the will of God in a manner that's pleasing to God. Does that make sense? A very basic example is you know, the Lord desires that you prosper. However, it does not mean that you go to the bank and rob a bank to prosper, correct? That is, that is not a pleasing way to accomplish the will of God. When it comes to finances, it's not a matter of When it comes to tithing, I should say this, when it comes to tithing, I said it here before, is that tithing is not generosity, tithing is, is obedience. And we are, if we are after the presence of God, then we are after the, we are after to please Him. That's what, how can we honor the Lord with, with our actions and with our deeds and with our words so that in everything that we do and everything that we say, we. It, it's pleasing to him. It's a it's an aroma pleasing to the to the Father. Sometimes it's easy to know that you know reading the scriptures is a, is is a pleasing uh, and the will of God, remaining in the Word and prayer and so many other worship, coming to church, gathering with the saints. But do not leave an area like finances and tithing. Don't live in a way that's not pleasing to the Lord because there's a measure of presence there that you will miss out on. And when we gather together and we, we all come together to live in a way that's, that's pleasing to the Lord, corporately we bring, it's like, it's like corporately we bring our measure of presence into the corporate gathering, encouraging the saints. Does that kind of make sense? 
the principle is that the pleasure of God and the presence of God go hand in hand. It's throughout scripture. And that's why it talks about, you know, being a cheerful giver because God never gave in, in an uncheerful way. And so let's not, I, let's not make the mistake. And I, I've had a deep conviction about giving generosity and tithing um, f- for some years now. And it's, there's a measure of presence that's found in pleasing the Lord in that manner that you, let's not miss out on, not as individuals, but even as a corporate group. Does that make sense? I hope I communicated it well. So let's give um, with cheerful hearts because we represent the cheerful father and let's please him with all that we are in every, in every way, in every word and in this manner as well so that there would be even greater measures of presence in this room. Amen? Amen. So I, there's the phone number on the screen. And if I you sh- need an envelope, you can just raise yeah. your hand. If you'd rather not give electronically, you can raise your hand or ushers will get that to you. Let's pray, Raul. Father, yeah. in Jesus' name, thank you for Raul. Thank you for what you're doing here in this room tonight. Thank you for your kingdom flooding the earth. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for what you're doing in Seattle and the nations of the world. Take this offering, glorify Jesus, and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can put the buckets up, and um, if you'd like to give that way, you're more than welcome. Um, We'll be back in just a moment. Bless you guys. Put your hand over his face So in your presence he would die And all of his royal soul the glory And it shines called us to boldly see your face. Show me your face, Lord. Show David knew there was something more than the ark of your presence in a manger Messiah was born among kings and peasants And all of his royal soul, the cool, and it shines down through the age. Now you've. 
called me to boldly see your face. Wash us your face. Show me your face. can just see your face. Oh, show us your face. Oh, show me your You who need a touch from the Lord are going to leave brand new. I said many of you are going to leave brand new in Jesus' name. So can we stand and welcome the choir? Then you're welcome to sit down once you welcome them.
the resurrection morn God's children all are home What a glorious celebration As we worship around the throne Unspeakable the glory As we see Him face to face Thank you. We love you. Let's bless the choir. Would you thank them? Thank you so much. Uh, for the next few minutes, I'm, we really all have the honor of hearing from somebody who's so dear to us and such an example of what it looks like to follow the Lord. Christy and Brian Brent, uh, I've been so used by God. Uh, as many of you know, Brian went home to be with the Lord last year. And uh, what a mighty, mighty man of God. What a blessing to our lives. What an encouragement to Jessica and I, and really to, to, the, to the world. Uh, God has used them to not only plant circuit riders, but to carry the word of the Lord for the send, to catalyze the send. And they're just precious. And tonight, Christy is here with her son Spencer and his wife Casey. And they have been just in the presence of the Lord for the last four or five days. And it was our heart to host them. I actually called them, gosh, I didn't give them much notice, I don't think. Was it last week? Yeah. I called last week. I said, hey, Christy, I'm in town. If you want to come and just be with the Lord uh, and be in his presence, I'm around next week. And she, she jumped at it. Actually was praying about it, not sure. And I think Lindy called her and said that she had had a, some type of experience with the Lord and felt like, the Lord had something here for Christy. And the Lord has something for us in Christy. Yes. The Lord has healed her of an amazing, uh, with, I should say, in an amazing way. And Christy, I just want to say how grateful we are for you, 
for the life you live, for the way you lead, for the humility you carry, for your love for the next generation. And we have the deepest honor for you, for Brian, your family, and for the circuit riders and everything the Lord has given you. So we're privileged to hear from you tonight. Can we all stand and welcome our dear friend, Christy Brent? Can we do that? Could I have a mic, guys? Love you. I love you. I love you. And Christy, I figured we would... I just want them to hear what the Lord did. I, I know that tonight, tonight will be a night of miracles. Come on. I believe that. And um, you're looking at one right here. So I am. I am. I want to hear about it, Christy. And I'm staying close to you so I can get some of that on me. <laughs> First of all, it is a joy to be in this house. It feels like home in here. And I don't know if like tracks like, but... Our family's been talking about um, just how tender and humble and compassionate and sweet this, the sound that comes out of this place is, and it's just restorative to the soul. Wow. I don't know if you know that when others walk in, you feel the thickness of the presence of God. And, Thank you, Lord. Um, we're so grateful for Michael stewarding that you. in his crew and all of you. It's such a joy and privilege to be here. And it's a privilege to be back in Orlando. It's been three, four years. Wow. So 2019 is when I came out for The Send. And my husband, Brian, um, I, I, I'm going to give you just a little snippet of how wild he was. So when we were dating... That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good this luck. This is a stretch. Yeah. Uh, we were dating, and he found out that I was sick. And I actually got diagnosed with Epstein-Barr virus while we were dating. And he was like, Jesus can heal that. He had no problem with it. We got married and my health went downhill. Um, but he was a man that pursued healing. Not as an event, daily. He was an intercessor he was pressing for it all the time. He was reaching for the next thing God had all the time. When I think of someone who was lack with, you know, lacking without lacking zeal, I think of Brian. <laughs> and he What did Lou call him? Lou called him the adrenal gland of the body of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> truly, he truly was. And all that that focus so then got focused on me being healed. And it became this symbolic thing when we started our church. Um that the Lord was restoring the bride of Christ and people kept having dreams of me in this wedding gown and this bell-shaped wedding gown and it had to do with the restoration of the body of Christ. And I didn't know if I wanted to be associated with the body of Christ. That could take a long time to get her looking good again. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to think about that. But the years went on and uh, we were in California and uh, we had just started hanging around Lou, I think, having our first, first interactions with Lou. And Brian was always around me saying, what's God saying? What's God saying? And he'd ask questions and just provoke the spirit to begin to speak. Well, one day in 2012, he said, what is God saying about this nation? Mm. And, and, you know, we had just moved from Kona, Hawaii to California and the Lord gave a huge download. He just dumped a whole page on something that he wanted to do in this nation. I'm just gonna tell you a couple of sentences from that. He said uh, seven years earlier, seven years prior to the send, the word that he said was, the greatest mission movements in history begins in Orlando. Seven years to the day, and I didn't realize it till I went back and read the notes that it was actually February 23rd, exactly seven years prior. Whoa. Countless souls are on the line. And there was such a sense of urgency for it. How did we know that this word was from the Lord? At the end of the word, it said, you will be healed. But there was no event in send in Orlando. There was no send. 
So we just shelved that word and kind of rolled on. Wow. And then the Lord instructed how he wanted the sin to be built around this group of men who would unify, lay down their own ministries for a day for the sake of a nation and preach um, going, taking your voice, opening your voice and, and Christy, going. Christy, you were suffering already physically at that time. So I had been sick already for 38 years. The last seven of those years, um, I had just Epstein-Barr virus for most of my life. Um, around my 25th wedding anniversary, I remember my husband flew back from Europe, and when he saw me, he had this horrified look on his face because my uh, face was sagging. I couldn't walk in a straight line anymore. My uh, language was slurred. I couldn't remember from one sentence to the next what I was even going to say. Wow. I would lose my train of thought constantly. Uh, I couldn't drive a car. I couldn't read. I hadn't been able to read for a very long time. And so those last seven years were pretty much bedridden in Huntington Beach, California, while things were stirring up with uh, circuit riders and the send. All of this was going on. Wow. We stayed in the place of prayer, but I was in pain. So Brian... N knowing this word that we had, you're getting to Orlando. Well, I was having like seizures all the time. When I went to the doctor, we had to make this bed in the back of the car to get me to the doctor. So I'm just trying to think of getting across the country through an airport, and then how will I be there all day? I, I couldn't figure it out, but we just said, yes, let's go. Um, Brian pushed me. <laughs> he did push me through a wheelchair through the Orlando airport. Wow. And... Um, we got to the send. We, we came a few days early. The day that we got to the send, it was when so, God has declared something beforehand that he's going to do. Isn't it just the most wonderful thing? Yeah. It's the most wonderful thing. And there are so many hurting people all around us. And you know when you're really sick or you have a real relational issue, and there is just not a counselor good enough to fix it. There is just not a doctor good enough to fix it. Mm -hmm. There is not medication that's going to resolve your issue. Mm -hmm. And you, the, your only way out is Jesus. Jesus showing up is your only yes. way out. I felt like when we gathered in that stadium, it was thousands of people saying, Jesus, only you. What a beautiful day it was. So many anointed men and women partook in that day. The evening rolled around, and uh, Michael had such a sweet spirit and just let out the most amazing. It's worth going back and watching when you want to see thousands of people get healed at the same time. Um, he just called him out along with worship, just exactly what you do here, no different. And then he called for people to put up their phone lights um, if you got touched by the Lord, thousands of phone lights went up in the dark Thank all God. over. And it was a 10, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. kind of thing. <laughs> so this is, we're looking at the last 40 minutes of the night. Loving it. So, oh, just spectacular. I'll remember those lights yeah. the rest of my life. Yeah. Lord, if you could let us be a part of that. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. It's worth putting our feet to the floor every day for, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm in pain. I am on the side of the stage. And I, I have been there for hours and racked in pain, begging in my mind to go home, but not wanting to leave the sweetness of the presence of the Lord. Brian sees all of these people on the stage that heal everywhere all around the world. And he looks at his friend and he said, how can we go home without one of these people praying for our wives. He said this to a friend. Could I interject? Something? Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, no, you keep the mic. Yeah, I've got yeah, one here. Right. Yeah. So I, my job was to <laughs> steward the fathers. That's not the easiest job in the world. <laughs> not I don't those know if fathers. you saw those guys. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, guys, sure. They're going to listen to me. So I went to Bill after we were, or before we prayed for the sick. And I said, Bill, do you have anything? That's why I so admire him. And he said, no, I don't. And I thought, well, great, Bill. You know, <laughs> kind of why we brought you here, you know. <laughs> and um, 
And then he said, I think you and Pastor Benny should take this moment. And I said, wow, okay. Looking back, how humble. So that is kind of what happened on my end. Now Christy's explaining what happened about 20 feet from us. Yes, so someone picked me up off a chair. I whipped up and went around, and Brian had grabbed Bill Johnson, who was standing in front of me, and he said something to someone else, what's her issue? And he looked at me. He had not started praying. He didn't extend a hand. All he did was look at me and say, Lyme's disease is not too difficult for God. Amen. In that moment, it was like someone opened my head and the glory of God just started to fill in like a waterfall flushing through my whole body, just waves and waves and waves and waves. I couldn't hold myself up. I'm bended over. And I, I look up at Brian, this is all on tape, and I say, on video, and I say, I don't feel any pain. And I don't remember. For the first time in years. And since I was 16. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I Thank don't you. feel any pain. My children were there. I have four children, three with spouses. They have never seen their mother well in their whole life. So the last three or four years have been quite a party, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, So, gosh, you know, we had a a man named Jerry Fry who experienced a revival in uh, San Jose. And he told us, never rush out of the glory. Yeah, he wrote all the glory. Yes, that's he wrote, yes. So we just... son, Steve, wrote all the glory. We we stood there and the whole stadium emptied out because it was closed. um, And we just stood there, like partly in disbelief. And partly just enjoying like this place, like halfway between heaven and earth, where you just are not here anymore and you're not there. But boy, if this is just a foreshadowing, my goodness, it was just so powerful. And uh, some of the really special people in my life got it orchestrated to be there, which was phenomenal. So finally, the people had cleared out. All the cars were out of the parking lot and we were parked way over the back 40 on a lawn and we started to walk out and I could hear the singing and and I could hear cheers like a goal was made like a soccer stadium and so we're walking out on the field towards the uh, car and I go Brian listen to that field I go what time is it though all those cheers and that singing and he stood there And he looked at me like, I don't hear anything. (laughs) And so I'm still hearing it. I'm still hearing it. I say it the second time. Well, you hear that, right? You hear that singing, right? It's like a choir. It's loud, Brian. Can you hear that? No, I, I don't hear anything. So we get to the car and I go, Brian, it's like they just made a goal and the whole stadium is cheering. Can't you hear that? Wow. And he just goes, Christy, you're hearing heaven. It's celebrating the fruitfulness of a promise held on to for 38 years. 38 years. 38 years. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. He's so good. Yes. He's so faithful to his word. If he has spoken the word, not one word will fall to the ground. We just need the strength to endure until he comes, until it is an appointed time. And it was very purposeful because the Lord said, you will be a domino of something that's just going to accelerate and cover the earth. And that is going to be the move and hand of God moving among his people, displaying his glory, healing things that are incurable. Amen. It's going to be such a joy. Amen. Wow. I love you. What an honor. What an honor to have Christy. Let her know you love her, would you? Thank you, Jesus. I think, uh, guys, come on, let's just bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Is Pastor Ben right on time? Can we welcome Pastor Benny? Thank you very much, and I love you too. And I did not take your seats, thank you. And I did not know I was speaking till 6 p.m. tonight. <laughs> Dear Michael called and said, would you please? I said, well, thank you for giving me all this time. <laughs> I have an hour and something drive over here, so that 95, brother. Are you all doing good? <laughs> Wonderful. Judy, where is Judy? I want to come back here. That was so anointed. Come here, come here, sweetie, come here. Can you sing that song again for me, you mind? Okay. Um, take your seats. I want her again to sing, He's Here, Let's Celebrate. Uh, who, was, who was with you earlier singing? Just yourself? Quiet, oh, well. <laughs> It's okay. We can just do it, do it alone. So you, you've got a mic? She is so anointed, this girl. Wow. So why don't we all... Uh, can we all stand up and just worship the Lord for just a few moments? Um, Joel, I'm glad you're here too, brother. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for what... You have done, to you be the praise. Oh, to you be the praise. Lift your hands and thank him. To you be the praise, Lord. You are our God. You are our wonderful Savior. Blessed be your holy name forever. Sweetest, dearest Jesus, wonderful Lord. Bless your people tonight, Lord, and do as you will tonight for your glorious name. He's here. He's the one who made the heads. Spoke the stars into the sky. He's the one who puts the sparkle in a baby's eye. You can hear him in the sweetness of a mother's lullaby. Yet so marvelous it is to realize he is here. Let's sing it together, Judy. Come on. He is here. Let's, Let's celebrate, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is here, the Holy One. Oh, let Him be adored. He is here to worship Him in such a sweet reward. He is here in our It again. He's here. He is here. Let's, Let's celebrate, celebrate the, the presence of the Lord. He, he is, is here, the Holy One. Oh, let Him be adored. He is here to, to worship Him. him. Such a sweet. Lord, to you be all the praise, all the majesty and glory. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Thank you, Judy. I may call on you in just a little bit again. Um, I want, you know, tonight, I love the way the Lord works. 
I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I love the way he works. He's uh, full of surprises. Yeah, Michael is laughing. I had such a blessed day today, quiet day. And um, <clears throat> I love my Sundays because I love to just spend time in the Word. Of course, I do every day, but Sunday is like special, you know. I have communion and just quietness. And I'm reading Isaiah today, and I was so, so stunned by uh, what I read. <clears throat> the, the, the Jewish people, this is after the Babylonian uh, invasion and captivity, and you can read about it also in Jeremiah, were the Jews that had stayed in the land after the captives had gone to Babylon. They wanted to go to, to, to Egypt. And the Lord said, no, don't go to Egypt. He said, your strength is in being still. Isn't that powerful? And I thought to myself this morning, I thought, what, a, what an amazing revelation. Your strength is in being still, not going to Egypt, wearing yourself out. And in that same chapter, we also read, in returning and quietness shall be your strength. And the Lord in that same chapter said, he said, I am waiting for you to wait on me. I'm waiting for you to wait on me so I might be merciful to you. And it struck me. A few days ago, I was speaking to uh, Bethany, uh, House of Bethany, House of Bethany. How many are a part of House of Bethany? Okay, you were there, so, but Michael wasn't there, but it's okay. You, you're a part of it, I love it. That is a very nice hat you have. That's when you, when you have that hat on, it means it's your day off. I see that. There's only one Michael, that's why we all, we all love him. Jesse, Jesse is not here because she had to be with our dear Theo this morning. And I said, baby, you gotta come. She said, daddy, I'm so tired. I said, okay, baby, stay home. So, we have a lovely family. I'm glad my sweet babies are here too. Would you go with me to Psalm 62? I was going to speak tonight since I didn't know I was going to anyways. Uh, <clears throat> on the way, on the way in the car, on the way in the car, I had a nice long drive here uh, with all the trucks everywhere. <laughs> Dear Lord, deliver us from these trucks. <laughs> anyways, so I'm thinking I'm gonna, in fact, Chad said, she said, uh, he said, you know, it would be so powerful if you can teach on taking your authority. Because I'd been teaching on that. And I said, yeah, maybe okay. But then Judy comes up and I'm watching on the phone. Of course, signal comes and goes, so you can't say everything. And you're singing that beautiful song, he's here. And I just kept sensing and feeling, you know, this is not the message for tonight. The message is different. So let's go. I want to really speak about something so important. Um, Psalm 62, verse 1. David, would you mind helping me? Do you have a microphone? Okay. This is my son-in-law too, by the way. I have two amazing <laughs> sons, not really sons-in-law, sons, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And the babies are here tonight, right? Thank the Lord. <laughs> They're not in the service, right? Thank the Lord double. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Okay. We're going to read Psalm 62, verse 1, and then I'm going to give you just a few other scriptures. But let's go to Psalm 62, verse 1, please, David. Go ahead. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. Why does he say that? Because he made a decision. David made a decision. He said, truly my soul will wait upon the Lord. He saw this power in that. 
And then we read in Psalm 130, verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. Wow. And who do we wait on? Well, Psalm 25, verse 5 says, On thee, on thee do I wait all the day. All the day? Yeah, if it takes all the day, of course. So David says, On thee, I will gladly wait all the day. And I'm adding the word gladly because he would not have said it otherwise. I hope these things are on the screen. Yes, they are. Thank God. Okay. Now, this is something very beautiful in, in Isaiah 33, verse 2. And I'm giving you a lot of scriptures quickly here. He said, be gracious unto us. Why? We have waited for thee. There's tremendous power in waiting. Tremendous. I think, sadly, a lot of God's people don't really hear about that much because that message is like absent today from the body of Christ. That's all we heard when, we, when I got saved. That's all, that's all we heard. The crucified life, waiting on the presence of God, being still in his presence. That's all we heard when we were young. Today it's all about activity and you know, doing this and doing that and wearing yourself out. And so it says in Psalm 37, 7, rest in the Lord and wait. Wow, that's good. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's Psalm 37, 7. So there's a lot of scriptures about waiting upon the Lord. So Psalm 62, 1. Truly my soul waits upon God. Psalm 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. Psalm 25 and verse 5. On thee I wait. I'm waiting on you, Lord. Not only just on waiting. There's a person we're waiting on. So it's not about waiting just to wait. Like for what? Now a lot of us have waited for doctors and hated it. Dentists hate it even more. And we're a nervous wreck by the time they call our name. But waiting upon the Lord, that's how you find rest. Not anxiety. Not stress. Your blood pressure doesn't go up. Your heart rate doesn't go up. There's rest. It's not beautiful. Now, I saw something happen years ago that I never thought I'd see. Now, you know, I had heard when I got saved, people like Lorne Cunningham and Cody Ten Boom, you know, imagine being exposed to those people. And they all would talk about wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. And if you had a problem and went to see your pastor, he said, wait on the Lord. That's what they'd say to you. I'll never forget going to more than once to Jim Pointer, who was a wonderful, like a spiritual father to me. And I'd say, I have the, the, whatever problem. He said, Benny, just wait on God. That's all they tell you. Today they give you a whole bunch of things to do, whatever, till you don't know what to do when they're done talking. <laughs> so, so I went to see one of the services with Miss Kuhlman. Now, Catherine was so into that big time. First time I had gone to a meeting, I didn't see her say that. So one of, I've been to, I don't know how many, a lot of them. So one service would, were in Pittsburgh. <clears throat> First Presbyterian Church, downtown, it's still there. And Catherine, in her beautiful way, she said, not a sound made. And she talked really dramatic, you know. Not a sound, not a sound. There, there was uh, some guy sitting about two rows, you know, in front of us. And he had his hands over his nose and mouth. Now, we could not hear him. And he, he, he was whispering something. And she heard him. And she, I can tell you how, how it happened. Now, everybody's quiet. Sir, I said not a sound. <laughs> had this been me, I would have gone under the pew. I didn't even hear the man whisper. 
I'm sorry, darling, did I scare you? Uh, I should have prepared you. I need to come lay hands on that dear girl right there. I, 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 I just am trying to show you the way it happened, because of what happened. So she, she, she's like, not a sound, not a sound. So everybody's quiet and don't know why we're quiet. That was the first time, first time ever I saw anyone in any service say that. And then this gentleman, you know, he's, and you know when you put your hands over your mouth, it actually magnifies your whatever. And she rebukes him like, and, and, and then this went on probably for uh, 10 minutes, maybe more, I don't know, and the organ playing so beautifully. I, I will never forget that moment as long as I live. Suddenly I heard cries, a woman, I can see, I can see, and miracles just broke loose. I never saw this in my life. It was first time in my, ever as, a, as a, a Christian where this lady says, not a sound, and people get healed. And one blind woman, totally blind, began to see. And then the deaf began to hear. And she did not even give a word of knowledge. She just said, not a sound. So I had just gotten into the ministry myself. So I flew back to Canada. And I thought, I'm going to try that. <laughs> See if it works. I thought, maybe this was just Catherine Kuhlman, you know? Because the anointing is always strong in her meetings. Now, you, you, you got to picture the scene, please. The majority of my crowds, we would have about 3,000 on Monday nights. I had just started in, goodness gracious, December 74. I was 21 years old. This had to be uh, mid-75. Miss Kuhlman passed in 76. So, you know, we were going back and forth every month down to Pittsburgh. Now I'm in the ministry. I still would go down because we used to take buses. There are uh, people who could not drive. Mostly the elderly would come on the bus, and Jim Pointer would take his accordion and would, would sing and worship all the way down from Canada to Pittsburgh. Good seven, eight, nine hours. You know what I, where I'm, that's, we would pass Buffalo where you came from. Anyway, so um, I go back to Canada. After that experience that just amazed me. So in my crowds were mostly Eastern European people, very quiet, sweet people, Latvians or Romanians, Hungarians, all that. Very few people came who were real Canadians in the early days. This will shock you. I was sponsored, my first meetings ever were sponsored by the Catholic Church in Canada, Charismatic Catholics. That, that's another story. So I had a lot of Catholics in the service who came, but they were mostly, you know, from uh, Eastern Europe. Now, my choir, my choir, which was not that good, by the way, in the early days, uh, they didn't sing, well, God love them all. Uh, it was Jimmy McDonald who came and fixed them all up. They began to sing well. Jimmy used to work with Miss Kuman. But some of them came from Jamaica, uh, Haiti, and places like that. And these were precious saints who, every few minutes, praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen. They, they just would say that throughout the meetings. <laughs> now, those Latvians and Catholics were quiet. But those people from Jamaica were always, hallelujah, amen, thank God, you know, all that. So half the choir was from Jamaica. So I thought, okay, we'll try this. Not a sound made. Now, I didn't say it as dramatic as Miss Kuhlman, but I, I asked them all to be quiet. So, you know, it took a while. It really did take a while. I had a beautiful lady play the organ from Scotland named Dear Anne. Anne Kay was her name. She was just a lovely lady. And, and, and she played okay. She wasn't the greatest musician, but she did her best. God bless her. In my, in my, in my early days, you just began with what you got. That's all. So I said, not a sound made, and ever like staring at me. And a dear man named Gary Beasley at that time, who was with me for years and years, was also there. 
So I didn't know what, what to do. I thought, okay, I'm going to just try this out. That dear choir, hallelujah. I said, no, no, not even hallelujah, please. Not a sound made. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, no, not even that. Be quiet. <laughs> it, was, it took a long time before they really got quiet. Now, it was hush. And I said to dear Ann, I said, now play something softly on the organ. So she did, beautifully. Now, I am, I'm not kidding you, I was holding the pulpit like this, not because of anything, when suddenly, before God Almighty, it was the first time I saw it in my meetings, I felt something hit the building. Everyone, I mean every human being, was on the floor. The power of God hit the whole place. Imagine that many people. <laughs> gone like that. The choir, gone. And, and Kay and I were the, and dear Gary were the only ones standing. And Kay was on the organ. She was crying. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. And Gary just stood there. He was right next to me in awe. And I thought to myself, Catherine was right. There is power in quietness. That was my first experience. So when you read, you know, scriptures, wait upon the Lord. Wait, uh, there's power in that. Tremendous power in that. We all know they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Uh -huh. What strength? Spiritually. They shall mount up. Say it. Come on. They shall what? Wait, 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 wait. Mount up means the wind carries you doesn't mean you carry yourself so when you're quiet the winds show up hello one more time they that wait come on say it upon the Lord shall what so if you're weak just don't do anything be, be still they shall mount up with wings as eagles meaning the wind of God will carry you you don't have to carry anything and then it says they shall what run and not be weary, and they shall what? Walk. In the spirit, we run before we walk. Waiting upon the Lord causes you to catch up with him. Because running means you're catching up. Now you can walk with him. Are you, are you getting that? So they shall run to catch up with walking with him. Waiting upon the Lord is so important to us. Now, let's see a few scriptures on why. Let's look. Are you enjoying this? Yes. Good. I'm glad I was interrupted today with my lovely day. <laughs> I do anything for Michael and Jessica. You all know that. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 27, 14 says what? Okay. Can we have it on the screen, guys? Psalm 27, 14. Now, these are powerful scriptures. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will what? Strengthen your heart. Now, do, do you remember earlier, I gave you a scripture from Isaiah 30, 33, verse 2. Be gracious unto us. Why? We waited. When you wait on God, you find his grace, not his wrath. So in Isaiah 33, verse 2, be gracious to us, Lord. We've waited on you. And I love Isaiah 30, verse 18. So, but before you go, no, no, wait, wait. Keep that, that scripture from Psalm 27, 14. I want to just show you one more thing in it. Because God's word is so powerful. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Why? Because people give up. So it says, don't give up. Be of good courage. It's going to really happen. It's going to really work. Don't give up before God shows up. Because we don't want to wait. We, we get a little uh, fidgety. Is that the word for it? Yeah. You have to wait and make sure you, you, you don't give up. Be of good courage means it's, it's going to happen. So don't worry about it. God will come through. And he will strengthen your heart. And he repeats it again. Wait, I say. On the Lord. 
I don't know if you ever heard me tell the story before we go on to Isaiah. There was, there's a dear man, Lily, named Peter Jacock. Peter Jacock was a Methodist, free Methodist man. He loved the Lord. And he would carry a massive Bible with him to church. And he and I became friends. So one day, he says, Benny, I'm going to pick you up in the morning at 5. Be ready at 5 a.m. I said, why? He said, he's going to change your life. God's going to change your life. So that was on a Sunday night. He said, tomorrow, Monday morning, you'll be up at 5, ready to go. I said, why? He said, I told you, God will change your life tomorrow morning. Okay. And that man loved the Lord. He would always cry in church, and he was sweet. He was a real mighty man of God. He was not in the ministry. He was just a normal, working, hardworking man who just loved God and loved his Bible. So 5 a.m. comes. He's on the waiting. I didn't think he'd show up. I am not a morning person, <laughs> as my children will tell you. Sometimes I won't sleep till 3 in the morning. Then I just, you know, sleep when, when I want to. <laughs> Anyways, so here, I, now in those days, I slept much earlier than I do today. Joshua will tell you that's true. You know, sometimes I'm up till whatever hours. So 5 a.m. comes, he's out there. I go in, into the car half asleep. And he drives and drives. Now, dear Amy, in those days, because she comes from Buffalo, an hour away from, from Toronto, you're in no man's land. You're like trees everywhere. That's all you see back then. Now, of course, it's built up. So he goes north of Toronto. Now, past Finch Avenue, there's nothing up there. And that was not that far from where we lived. So now he keeps going up, up north towards whatever. And there's trees. All you see is trees on both sides of the road. Not a highway, just a nice country road. Just kept going and going and going and going. Now we're an hour in that car. We've been seeing trees for a whole hour. <laughs> not a building around, not a nothing around. And he stops. Just stops. Comes into that little dirt road. He says, come take a walk with me. I said, why? He said, just come. Because <laughs> I'm wondering, what's this guy doing here? Not a building in sight, not even a gas station. Now we walk in the forest, and we walk, 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 where we cannot see where the car is now. You wish you were there, huh? Yeah, yeah you would have taken pictures with your phone then. We're walking, and walking, and walking, and walking, and now... The car disappears because of all the trees. And he looks, he says, I'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm scared now, thinking he's gone cuckoo, <laughs> losing his head. I'm gonna die here. <laughs> but I thought, you know, you, you think about, okay, he probably wants to go do something, you know, behind some trees. Okay, go, <laughs> do your thing. <laughs> what do you think? Like, I'll be right back. Like, well, go where? Like, uh, go. <laughs> Talk to the animals? Uh, what is it? So the only thing you can think is the guy's got to go. You know, he's got to go, so go do it. Come back. 20 minutes go by. And I'm thinking, oh, dear God. He left me. He's gone back to the car. I'm going to die. So I, now, now you tell me what would you do? What would you do if somebody left you in the forest? You don't know either. See? Uh, you, you'd start crying. Well, I began screaming. <laughs> and I would scream, Peter! Peter! I thought, this is it. This is my last, last day on earth. And Josh, honey, he jumps. He, he, he wasn't, not even like this. He was like this close to where I was. But with all the trees, you couldn't see the guy. He was hiding back there to see how long I'd last. <laughs> uh, that's what he told me later. He said, I wanted to see how long before you scream. <laughs> I thought, God, I wanted to kill the man. <laughs> but anyways, 
I'm being funny now. So now he, he comes out and he was not that far. He says, see, you can't be quiet long enough. I said, you brought me here an hour or more drive from my home to tell me I can't be quiet. And then he gave me the most amazing lesson about quietness. He said, Benny, he said, Dale Moody said, if I can take a man and keep him quiet for five minutes and let that man think about his soul, I'll get him saved. He said, there's power in quietness to bring people out of sin. He said, no one thinks that long about their soul. Nobody. Now, by, by that time, I'm like, you're right. But he brought me all the way so I would remember it. And I have remembered it. <laughs> I will never forget that day. So his, his message was quite simple. Find, oh, here's what, what he said. He said, if you find quietness, you'll always find God. He said, you'll find him all, always in stillness, in quietness. He said, learn that lesson for the rest of your life. And I have. It was a big wake-up call that day of the power of quietness. But that man knew something about the Lord. And it's true. Now, that was before Catherine Kuhlman, by the way. That was before I went to that service. This is before I was in the ministry. I was still young, just got saved. I didn't know anything about the ministry, nothing. And this man took me to the forest to say, in quietness you find God. And how true. The psalmist said, be still and know I'm the Lord. Now, stillness strengthens us. But think about how many people, do you know, how many people do you, do you know that talk all the time? They're always fidgety. Always having to say something. Never quiet long enough to hear the voice of the Lord. They, they want to talk to him, but they don't want him talking to them. His voice becomes clear when we're still. Now, I want to show you so, uh, something beautiful in Isaiah 30, verse 18. So can, can we go to that? Isaiah 30, 18. And you know, it's so simple. These things are so simple. We make the Christian life so difficult. No, no, it is simple. Okay, Isaiah 30. 18, and therefore, watch this, and therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious, and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of judgment, blessed are all they that wait for him. Now that chapter I read this morning, I'm, I'm going to show you some amazing things, in fact, It'll probably be better for me for my phone because amazingly, my phone, uh, the colors are in it. I don't know how Chad did that, but he was brilliant. I read my, I read my, uh, my, my Bible on my iPad and I color it. I color it like this, see? So my phone copied my, my iPad. And I did not know. And here is the scripture in verse 7, colored in blue. As I was reading it this morning. Their strength is to sit still. Can we just put that on the screen? Uh, that same chapter, Isaiah 30, verse 7. Just look, look at that incredible verse. And this is what I was sharing with you, with, with you earlier. They wanted to go to Egypt. And God says, the Egyptians will, will not help you. Their, their help will be in vain. To no purpose. And God says, therefore have I cried concerning this. I've been shouting at you not to go to Egypt. He said, their strength is to sit still. You find strength. Let me show you another one. Same chapter, same chapter, verse 15, verse 15, same chapter, 
Now, God is still talking to a people who were determined to go to Egypt because they were afraid of the Babylonians. They wanted to go to Egypt thinking Pharaoh would help them. For thus saith the Lord. Now, he's talking to those same crowd that wanted to go, that he just said, your strength is to sit still. He says, therefore, thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved from the Babylonians. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, but you don't want it because they wanted to go to Egypt. <laughs> and we, I just gave you verse 18 earlier, right? It's a part of the same chapter, same whole message. God is talking to a people who are not listening about stillness, quietness. So now you go to verse 18, and he says, the Lord will wait. Now he's talking to this crowd that says, ah, oh, we don't want to wait. We're not going to sit still. We, we want to go down to, the, to, to, to Pharaoh so he can help us to the Egyptians, so they can help us. And God said over and over, just sit still. In returning a choir, he says, no, you just stay where you are. And then he says this, this is because I'm painting the whole, the whole picture for you. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious. So what he's saying basically is, I'm waiting for you to wait. I'm waiting on you to wait on me. And that's a powerful, mighty, truth the Lord it says therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious to you you that want to leave and go to Egypt for help and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy on you for the Lord is a God of justice that's what that word means by the way it's just judgment blessed are all they that wait for him how beautiful <sighs> but they won't do it. And then there's a powerful thing in verse 19. If we can just show them verse 19 quickly, please. Because it's a whole message. You can preach on that whole chapter and not even run out of material. Just on that one chapter. About waiting I'm talking about. He says, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, Thou shalt weep no more. He's telling them about the power of waiting on him, that he will bring things to pass they cannot. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer. Wow. But people don't want to do that. They want to do it themselves. It doesn't work. All right, let me just answer a few questions here. Why? Why do, we, why do we have to wait? Listen carefully. Because the fullness of the Spirit and our waiting are inseparable. You cannot be full of the Holy Spirit if you're too busy. The fullness of the Holy Spirit and our waiting are inseparable. They are linked together. You know what I like to do in the morning sometimes? I'll just show you rather than tell you. Just show you. I have this most beautiful uh, playlist. And I put a few songs on it that I really like. And sometimes I'll just start playing them and I just sit there. Just sit there. I don't do anything, I just sit there. And I usually start with this. And I don't do anything, I just, just sit and wait. You know, sometimes I'll read the word or read the Psalms, but. I just sit and wait. You all know the song. Yeah. And it goes, I, I don't have to, anyways. And 
And when, when, when I start playing these beautiful worship songs, not even 15 minutes, I'm in. I haven't said a word. I'm just... And now the tape stops, and I'm really in. Because you can't get out now. And you want to stay in. And the presence of God just manifests. I have never done drugs. I don't want to do drugs. I don't need drugs. When, when I was young, had, had I done drugs, my father would have killed me. I was afraid of my daddy before I got saved. I wasn't afraid of God. I didn't know God. I was afraid of my dad. Then I got saved, and now I had two people to fear, God and my dad. <laughs> but I have had moments in the presence of God I can't even explain. The joy, the fulfillment, the ecstasy I have felt in His presence cannot be compared in this world. There's no way. In the Crusades, when we would worship, I would look at Don Boss, who was my, my sound man, with tears, I'd say, there's nothing like it, there's nothing like it. I would actually whisper and say, Lord, don't let me come down this mountain, take, take me home now. Because it was so incredibly glorious, like beyond human emotions, beyond anything in this world. Beyond anything in this world. A friend of mine named Kent Maddox, who's now a pastor in Alabama, he's wild too, by the way. He was on drugs for years, and then once he got saved, he got saved, he got actually changed in this church today, right, right back there. And today he's got a big, massive church up there in, in Alabama. So one day he comes up to me. He says, Pastor Benny, I've done all kinds of drugs. He says, there's no high like the most high. <laughs> word for word, he said that on this, this platform here. He said, I've done all kinds of drugs. He said, I've been high all my uh, four years. He said, but there's no high like the most high. I never thought I'd hear that from anyone. But th that's a fact. In quietness, you find that joy. And I don't like calling it a high. I don't think even that's a good word. It's joy unspeakable. This morning, dear God. And I didn't even play worship music this morning. I was just reading Isaiah. And I got so deep in it, I was like, an earthquake can hit, let it go. Let it hit. Because nothing shakes you. Great peace have they that love thy law. In that beautiful time. So, that's where you, you, you experience the fullness of the Spirit. I did this morning, for goodness sake. And you know when you experience the fullness of the Spirit, your tongue, like praying in tongues, becomes powerful. It's not repetitious. It's a language. And you're flowing. You're just flowing. You're just flowing. And you think this is greater than anything I could explain. So waiting, here's what waiting does. Waiting empties you and I of self. Waiting enables you to receive God's fullness because when God gives his Holy Spirit, he gives the Holy Spirit in our, in, in our innermost being, but waiting empties our being from self. So waiting delivers us from self. Isn't that glorious? And waiting also, not only does it quiet the soul, it, in, it really enables the Holy Spirit to touch our depth. Um, in waiting, really, we're quickened because I'm, I'm kind of taking my time in saying this. Go, go to Psalm 42 quickly. Look at verse 7 and 8. It's a very um, amazing portion that a lot of people misunderstand. But it's quite powerful. Nathan, are you enjoying this, brother Nathan? Good. Deep calleth unto deep, 
at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Now this is a very amazing verse because, and, and, and I'll, 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 I'll try to explain it as best as I could. Years ago, it, it began happening with me here and there a little bit. I had just read Madame Guyon's book on experiencing the depth of Jesus Christ, and I said, okay, I'm going to be very, very quiet in God's presence. And as I was quiet, the only way I can describe it, I went within myself. But this explains what happened. Deep calls unto deep is like um, I was flying into Cali one day, into Cal California. As we landed, I looked over the, the ocean. I saw a tornado over the water. And it began pulling the waters of the Pacific up like that. It was the most amazing sight. It only happened once in all my life I saw it. So I stopped. I said to Captain Dan, I said, Captain, Captain, look, look. He said, that's a water spout. I never knew that. So it says here, water spouts. The, the tornado was pulling the water out off the ocean, up. When you're in that depth, God pulls you into his depth. Wow. It's like, it's like, and you're in it. Deep calls unto deep, and when that happens, a noise of that tornado shows up. May I say it like a spiritual noise almost. And you can, in the natural, you can, we actually heard it. We're not that far when that happened. And you can hear something almost like a, like a train way in the, in, the, in the distance. And it was sucking that water up into, into the atmosphere. That has happened to me in the spirit. It'll happen to you if you'll be still enough. Because in that depth, God speaks to the spirit. He, he doesn't speak to your mind. Your spirit man begins to hear God. And at that moment, you are pulled in in such a blessedness to what if you say even hallelujah, you lose it. I, I hope you heard me, right? Because you say sometimes something religious, but it's all the flesh. At such times, don't say a word. Let him say. Don't you say. Let him talk, not you talk. Because if you talk, it's over. That happened to me when back in the 70s, I realized the, the danger of interfering in such moments. And so I'm going to... I'm going to read something to you that I wrote, and, and I, I, I hope uh, this, this will help you somehow. The multitude of words and the fervency of feelings in prayer have often been a hindrance to the presence of God. Can I read that again? Yes. The multitude of words and the fervency of feelings or emotions in prayer have often been a hindrance to the presence of the Lord. Because in waiting before God, the soul sinks down into its own nothingness. Can I say it again? When you wait on the Lord, can you play something real gentle behind me, Joel? When you wait on the Lord, and let, let, let God lead you, please. Um, your, your soul sinks down into its own nothingness because it's, it's, it's empty. And now as you, as you move into your nothingness, God lifts you up into his divinity. So your nothingness, uh, you, you wait on, the, on God and you sink deep into it. And that's what I felt, but I couldn't even describe it, so I said... And I say, I felt I was going into myself. Basically what was going on, I was sinking into my emptiness, my nothingness. And at that moment, the Lord showed up in that amazing moment of silence and began to lift me into his divine presence. 
And, and only that is what brings fulfillment and the fulfillment of his promises. And now uh, faith that is born in that can erase the challenges of life. May, may I say it again? Okay. When you're quiet, <clears throat> you sink into your depth. And when you get into your own depth, you, you, you find emptiness, nothingness. At that moment, you cannot rely on self. God now begins to lift you up into his presence. When he does, just like that psalm we just read, when he does, faith becomes divine. It's not your faith anymore working, it's his faith. And when that faith lives, it eliminates the challenges you're, you're facing. They just disappear like they don't exist. I know it's a little deep tonight, but I think, I think what's, what God is doing here and in different places, uh, I, I think the waiting upon the Lord is what brought that move up in that, in that college, that uni I should say university in, in Asbury. Uh, let me just show you one more scripture. Zechariah 2.13, a very powerful, powerful word. I, you know, I'm really kind of uh, choosing my words for now because I don't want to kind of lose you because I could get a little deeper maybe and, and I don't know if I should. But let's, let's go to Zechariah 2 and let's look at verse 13, the most remarkable portion. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. When people are silent in his presence, remember that precious command, be still and know, be still and know. You won't know God without being still. Be still and know I am God. In that stillness, here silence, God is raised up. Every time in scripture, you see the Lord seated. But in silence, he's raised. So it says, let God arise. His enemies will be scattered, right? How? What causes him to arise? You're waiting. Are you, are you listening to this? Your waiting causes him to reveal himself to you to manifest his presence to you or arise and then his enemies are scattered because demons cannot live where God is neither can sickness live where God is in the presence of the Lord and that's what I saw in, in Catherine's meeting when she said not a sound made and then healings took place in that silence the, the presence of the Lord manifests and people were healed. I saw it with my own eyes that day and in my own meetings. And by the way, by the way, that's happened way more than once in, my, in, 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 in our meetings. Way more than once. And you say it over and over to where you say, you know what? God has made this, made, made this so simple that all you do is just sit still. That's very simple. Don't even say anything. Let the Lord show up and let him talk to you. And I believe this is what uh, will birth worship. Okay. Look, look at me, all, all of you. I'm almost done because I don't want to keep going. You are spirit, soul, body. Your soul every day decides who to surrender to, body or spirit. If the soul is weak, if the soul is weak, it yields towards the flesh. If the soul is strong, it yields towards the spirit. So, be still and know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
And if you wait, that's when the body loses, the flesh loses, the world loses, you. And now you're strong enough to say no to the world and yes to God. So stillness strengthened you within to yield to the Holy Spirit. But when people yield to the flesh, it's because there's no strength in them. That is the result of stillness. Am I, am, am I getting through to you? Okay, so you're, you're busy that day. You haven't waited on the Lord. Now, our ways, because we've lived in this body so long, it's easier to surrender to the flesh than the spirit. Why? Because that's just the way it's been since we were, we were born. We are more accustomed to yielding to the body. We're more accustomed to going backwards than forwards. Why? Because the, the flesh has amazing power over all of us. That's why Paul said, don't be conformed to the flesh. Don't go back to it. So what is the answer? Quite simple. The longer I wait, the less the, the flesh has power. The longer I wait, the stronger I get. The less I wait, the weaker I get. So when people rush into prayer without waiting, they haven't done much to, to help themselves. So now they leave prayer and they get right back into sin as quickly as this. But if you wait upon, upon the Lord, you'll have the strength to say no to the body. No to sin, no to the world. And yes to the Holy Spirit living in your heart. Comprende? Okay. That's why waiting is repeated. Wait. I say wait. I say wait. I say wait. Because God knows how easy it is to go backwards. As the flesh has such a hold on all of us. It's hard to fight it unless God shows up. And God shows up in quietness. And that's when worship begins. And that's when you can surrender to, to the Lord. And He actually worships through you. Real worship. And by the way, you know, when you, when you look at, uh, at the scripture, <clears throat> Colossians 2 talks about worship in the flesh. People can worship in the flesh. Because Paul says in Colossians 2, uh, verse 18 and verse 23 that worship in the uh, in the flesh satisfies the flesh not the spirit can we just look at that quick okay but what did jesus say the father seeks those who worship in spirit but listen 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 it's impossible to worship in the spirit until you wait because waiting strengthens you to surrender to the Spirit, that you can worship in the Spirit. Colossians, Paul said, he said, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will, in will worship. In other words, it's by the flesh. Will worship. It's a decision you make to worship. It's not God in it. You're in it. And humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor, but rather it's satisfying the flesh. So today, a lot of our worship is just song services. And what do they do? They wear you out. You want to just sit down and say, give me a break. But in the spirit, it strengthens you and strengthens you and strengthens you. In fact, you become stronger even physically as you worship. Are you listening? Yeah. Okay. So let's just finish with John 4, 24, and I'm done. I, I, I wasn't planning on this, but, and I shared a lot of this, by the way, at Bethany uh, a few days ago, but I didn't think I would, I, would, I would do it here, but, well, it's God's plan, I suppose. Um, in John 4, let's just go, go to the Gospel of of John 4, 24, which we all know by heart, but I want you, I, I want to point one thing to you. 
God is a spirit and they that worship him must, because there's no other way, must worship him in spirit and truth. What did he mean by that? That is answered in the Psalms. In Psalm 22, 22. Because you're not the worshiper. He is the worshiper. That is truth. Watch what it says in Psalm 22, 22. Can we, can we go to that please quick? Psalm 22, 22. Because the one who, who is worshiping is the Lord himself. Worshiping in truth is where you allow the Lord to use your vessel as a temple of worship. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise thee. In the midst of the congregation, I, the Lord himself says, will praise you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name, wonderful Lord. Can we just begin just praying in the Holy Ghost for a moment, all of us? David, get back, get on that instrument now. Come on. Joel, you, you mind just letting him take over? Just all of you, pray in the Spirit out loud. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. You're holy. I bless it. Blessed God, blessed Lord, we give you the praise. Can we all stand up? Can we all stand up, please? We bless you, Holy Lord. We bless you, Holy Lord. Ma kol pial bakanti remo. Lift your hands and just thank him today. Ma na ma na kanti pial bakanti menulu. Ma kol alfe pial bakanti menulu. Blessed be your holy name, Lord my God. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior. Just begin to lift your voices in, in prayer right now. Just pray in the Holy Ghost out loud, please, right now, all of you. My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee How great, how great Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great, and when I think. That God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing. He bled and died. He bled and died. Take away my sin. The 
Then sings my soul, then sings my Savior God to thee. How great, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. How great, when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adorations and there proclaim, my God, how great, then sings my I want the uh, the people in the worship team. Can you come and stand here a minute? Those in the worship team, just come. Now, Lord, I ask you tonight to bring all of them into that beauty, into that revelation of depth in your presence into that place of holiness when they are alone for I believe with all of my heart wonderful Jesus you have a great plan for this blessed ministry that you've established on earth through Michael and Jessica. And this wonderful, amazing team that loves you so much. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. Part of Lord, glory, glory, that place when they're alone in your presence that will experience what we've talked about tonight
but don't touch them. Christine. Christine. Our Lord. Thank you for your promise. You said to us in your precious word, I just want to talk to this woman of God for a minute, and you can all stand just quietly in reverence. Michael told me a little bit of what's happening in, in your soul, in your heart. I just want you to know from the, the scriptures, and I'm sure you do, but it's God's going to do something for you tonight that will be, bring tremendous blessings and change. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with Him, with Him, those who are with Him. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall not precede them that are asleep, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says that God had wrought something in all of us, that we all want to be free from this tent this tabernacle. And then he made an amazing statement. He said to be absent from the body. To be absent from the body. We all want that. Is to be present with the Lord. Christy, right? That's your name? Okay, look, look at me a second. Cody Tamboom was preaching a message back in Holland. I was young when I went to hear her in, at, at her church. And she took a glove and she held it up. She said, this is you. This is your body. And she held up her hand. She says, this is the Lord. Then she talked about how we have to surrender to the Lord, our body. And she put her fingers one by one into that glove. And now she said, now God can use you. She said, if you only surrender two fingers, he still cannot use you, because only two fingers are in the glove. And then she went from there. And then as all her fingers were in the glove, she said, now God will use you. My dad was 58 years old when he went home. He smoked all of his life. He got saved shortly before he passed. He had cancer in the, in the lungs. My mom was grieving for a long time. And finally said, Mom, God would not have pulled that cigarette out of his mouth. It's not his nature. I said, Daddy decided to smoke. And so his lungs gave up. And then I said, Mom, only the glove died and her eyes came alive. I said, only the glove died. Why is why are you still grieving for? Why grieve over a shell? She said, say it again. I said, dad is not dead. Our dad, our papa is not dead. Only the shell died. It set her free. I said, stop going to the gravesite. He's not in there. Never has been, never will be. Then I gave her the scriptures 
from 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 Corinthians 5, and others. But I give her some, something that I want to give you. If you read Philippians chapter 1, all, why don't you all sit down and listen, because you all need this. How many of you have loved ones in heaven? They are not dead. In fact, they know what happens with you all the time. You say, how you know that? Philippians 1, why don't you read it and find out for you? Not now, not now. In Philippians chapter 1 is an amazing scripture. Paul says, in verse 23, he says, I am between two decisions. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He says, you know what? I want to go home better for me. I'm just paraphrasing. I want to go home better for me. But I think I'll stay better for you. That's what he says. I'm just paraphrasing it. But then he makes an amazing statement in verse 27. He says, but whether I go, meaning be with the Lord, or stay, I will know of your affairs. That's the closest scripture in the Bible that the saints know what's going on down here. It's Philippians chapter 1, verse 23 through 27. It's not Hebrews 12. Because people talk about the cloud of witnesses. No, that has nothing to do with anything except the champions of faith in chapter 11. There are cloud of witnesses. But Philippians 1, 23 through 27 is clear. I want to go home better for me. I want to stay better, better for you. But whether I go or stay, I'll know what's going on with you. Your husband knows everything you say and how you feel. Look, all we have is this, and you know that, but all we have is the scriptures. That's all. Yeah, we miss them. I miss my mom. I miss my dad. But we comfort ourselves, for the Bible says, with these words, comfort each other. That's in First Thessalonians 4. Comfort each other. So, I want to pray for you. Now, Michael and Jesse said, well, Dad, would you come pray for her in the back? I said, okay, fine, but I said it's probably easier when the anointing is flowing. So all of you stretch your hands towards her. Now, Lord, this is the last day, last time. No more, no more even thinking about it. He's with you joyfully in your presence. Heal her body. Heal her totally, Lord. Totally, Lord. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let your presence do it, Lord. Let your presence do it, Lord. For your name's sake. Let you all stay where you are and I want everyone here that maybe for the last time surrender to the Lord Uh, some of you already have but you've had it you've had some bumps on the way tonight no more bumps no more trials no more hiccups no more turbulence in the spirit this is the time we must take seriously the words, come unto me all you who labor. You've been fighting and it's been too long. It's time to stop fighting and start yielding to the Lord. Let him live his life through you. You're not gonna win any any other way, I promise you. So those of you who've been struggling with Sin, the world, the devil, the flesh. It's time now you surrender and say, no more. Believe me, that life is available. Freedom, total freedom. That the Lord will totally take hold of your being and live his life through you. 
I'm an example, and so are many of you in this room. But you have to be serious and not keep looking back like Lot's wife to the pastor. No, 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 no more. We make a decision. We spend our time in the scriptures because we need it, especially in the beginning of our walk. Let the Lord minister his word to us, strengthening us. And then you can run. Then that pull of the world will not be there anymore. You must have the Lord's presence through his word. It's not about knowledge. It's about his knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord. We don't read the Bible to read the stories. We read the word to find the Lord. And when we find him, his presence manifests. So I'm sensing the anointing. I want to pray over you. Every one of you that has been fighting sin, the world, temptations, all that, get up out of your seat and you come right here now. Just come out of your seats and come and kneel right here. We want to pray with you. And Michael, come please and stand with me. Just, just come and just kneel all down here and all over there. And uh, Judy, come here, darling. Just have her, uh, I think she's still being ministered to by the Lord. Come up here, sweetie. And uh, Lily, doll, come with her and sing, he's here, let's celebrate. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing something new in this room. Something very new and beautiful and almost like springtime in the spirit, you know. Pardon? We just use that word like springtime in the spirit. I love it. Wow, I never heard that. So I guess the Lord is confirming it to you. Hallelujah. Judy, you just minister, but let me pray for the Lord. Just, just begin playing that song, uh, Joel. Wonderful Lord, you, you that have come down that need that true freedom. Lift your hands and just repeat after me. Dearest Jesus, you promised liberty to everyone who will come to you. I am here, Lord, in need of liberty from sin, from the world, and from temptation. Oh, dearest Jesus, manifest your presence in my heart, in my life. Thank you, Lord. From this day forward, let me experience your freedom, your liberty, your peace, your joy, your love, your strength in my heart daily. And dearest Redeemer, give me a love for you I have never known. Please, Lord, intensify it day by day moment by moment inflame my heart with your love thank you Lord and on that day as I stand before you I will hear you say well done and you're able to keep me from falling and to present me before your throne with joy I give you the praise. Lift your hands and love him. Judy, please sing it for us, darling. He is here. Let's celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is here. The 
holy one, oh let him be adored. He is here to worship him as such a sweet reward. He is here in our midst. He is here. Sing it again, please. Sing it with her, Lily. Let's stand and sing it. Come on. He is here. Let's celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is here, the Holy One. Oh, let Him be adored. He is here to worship Him. It's such a sweet. the team to help some of our worship team up so I'll need some people to help most of the team is on the ground <laughs> it's a good thing if you're sick in your body you need the Lord to touch you we're going to invite you to line up uh, in the center two aisles so the aisle to the right and left of the center seating section and the prayer team Julie, Judy's going to continue ministering wasn't that beautiful? How many of you sensed the Lord's presence? Thank you, Lord. Um, if you're at the altar right now, uh, team, if we could clear the altar, please. I would like our prayer team to come up to the altar uh, two by two. I feel something special tonight. I, this is, uh, we're going to see breakthrough. I feel it. So prayer team, come quickly. Just come line up here right in the middle. Yeah, if we could move this sweet lady here. We can put her on a, on a seat. That'd be great. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blake, if you and Ashley McKenzie knew could come up as well just to make some room or just to help. We need we a lot of people who need a physical healing. How many know Jesus is alive? So those of you who are coming forward, our team is in compassion and in faith. We have no desire just to pray and not see a breakthrough. We, we trust the Lord to touch your life. So I'm going to ask Judy to keep leading, team, release the word of the Lord, and let's trust the Lord to touch them. God bless you all. You're welcome to stay in the presence of God. May the Lord bless you. Oh. 
just a leader you are He is here In our midst He is here He is here To celebrate The presence of the Lord He is here He is here to worship Him as such a sweet reward. He is here in our midst. He is here.
here we are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus image will be the local church Jesus school uh, house of Bethany all of that will be located right here in fact in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally so we're so excited we're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard we own this land God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County, right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. 
Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for his people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus Image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10:42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first-year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. 
It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, he rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.